Hey guys. Man, it's cold. But uh, we're at the U.S. Capitol building behind razor wire, barbed wire, and a gigantic anti-riot fence stopping us from uh, getting any closer. Take off my other gloves. Hang, hang on, this is cold as hell. What's this vehicle? Oh, police motorcycles. Capital Police. It might be. You never know how cold it is. Oh, so there you see the. Uh, hang on a second. There you can see the razor wire. Razor wire, I think, runs around the entire U.S. Capitol building. So um, I'm going to take you around the entire perimeter of the Capitol, which is actually a hike. It does seem like that, doesn't it? Except they had better sausages. So yeah, the fence, the, the first day, the fence used to be on that side of the street, but then they closed off this side and then they put up the whole fence. So now both sides are closed. Oh, it's cold. Dang, it's cold. Brrr. Um, there's National Guard troops I saw in a van. I haven't seen any on the ground at the moment. But I'm sure we will see some. Eh, fell on a penguin six. Yeah, this uh, this will be up on YouTube a little bit later. This video I'll upload it later so you guys get a better 720p version of it. That is nuts. They just told us on the radio that the troops are going to be here until March. Which is another two months. We're going to have at least 5,000 troops here for another two months. I want roast beef for lunch. Yeah, I'm going to keep going on... Um, Twitter and YouTube and uh, HAPS, H-A-P-P-S. There's some anti... Probably some families in the National Guard want them to come back. <laughs> oh, this is cold. Let me see if I can get you a really good picture. There's your barbed wire. Hey, how's it going? All right, we're still here. We're also on Haps and YouTube, even Twitch. So I'm taking photos with my other camera. It is pretty spooky, isn't it? Oh, there's some guardsmen over there, some soldiers over there. It is razor wire. Those guys look cold. Uh, yeah, there's like nonstop. I am HAPS. I'm not live at this moment on HAPS. HAPS doesn't have a uh, very good image stabilization, so I haven't really do it. Get the troops out. Are they leaving this up? They're leaving this up until at least March, it seems. We're gonna have troops here until March. I'm, I'm called the Penguin Six on Twitch, but I don't do much over there. Yeah, the Penguin, because I couldn't get Penguin Six on Twitch. It's annoying. I'd talk to them about it. So there's more National Guard troops over there. They are carrying weapons. No, those guys don't have their guns today. Maybe they stood down. The other day they all were carrying weapons, and they were like. I saw my old videos. There were hundreds, hundreds. Lunch today, I don't know. Oh, there's a cow. That's a cell tower on wheels. 
That's an emergency cell phone communications device. Those things should be going away soon because there's no need for extra stuff. Hey, Beirut, how's it going? I know you, hello, kitty. And Twitch, okay. We'll take a look for that. Wonder how far I have to go around this fence line to get get all the way around. I'm cold, really cold. I'm kind of tired because I ended up staying up late. I watched the movie Bombshell last night, which was actually pretty good. It's the story of Fox News and uh, the women who sued for sexual harassment. You see National Guard troops right over there. There's a bunch of them there. They're bored. There's nobody here. I mean, there's just nobody here except the guard and me and like, that's it. It's like freezing. It's gonna snow tonight. We're supposed to get two inches of snow tonight. They do, they are pretty heavily decked up, but I, you know, they're all moving around like beat cops, you know, which is the tap your foot left, tap your foot right, you know, stuff like that. They're trying to uh, stay warm <laughs> because it is kind of cool. There's a couple more cows. No cell tower on wheels. 17 Celsius. That is not bad. We're at about 30. We're at about zero Celsius right now. Two Celsius, I think. And we're going to go down to negative two Celsius tonight. So, so. Hmm. There's just for the cops. They got all these porta potties. Okay, so I think we can cross this street and we can make our way up Capitol Hill a bit. Oh. Hey, wait a second. That, that's like a steam grate. Oh, damn. It smells like pee, though. It's warm. It just smells like urine. <laughs> that sucks. Kitty Emily on Twitch. All right. I'm not waiting for this light. They like, they like ran the razor wire across the top of the gates. I don't know how they, I guess they could open the gate. The razor wire will go with it. Oh. Hey, you're a maestro. So here's our barbed wire. It just goes on and on and on. Let me see if I can get a close up of it. I'm going to go in with the capital, yeah? Okay, so here's our. Capital. This isn't working out well. I need a better picture. I know what I need to do. Whew. My hand is so cold. Ah, I'm going to go up here. We'll zoom in. So sad. Okay, what's going on with this camera here? Unlock this camera. There's those cows. Okay, so, ooh, Emily on Haps too. Okay, we'll check that out. I'm cold. The troops, they're right over there. This guy's right over there. This guy's over there. This guy's over there. Uh, you make me take my gloves off, don't you? There they are, see? There's some guards. There's some troops over here. Um, some troops have been deployed. In fact, we saw the uh, Minnesota National Guard was flying troops out yesterday. You can track the movement by um, watching what aircraft are taking off from Andrews. So, I don't, the fence is probably gonna be up for months. All of this is office buildings. This is actually the Department of Labor. This is a law firm, um, but they're all office buildings. 
so the call sign for like the Minnesota National Guard was Gopher. Mm -hmm. So like Gopher 94, Gopher 93, those were the aircraft that uh, go back. And then, nah, there's, I mean, mostly C-130s and C-17s in the Air Force. There are a few C-5s that come in and out. And the call sign for the Tennessee National Guard is Elvis. <laughs> so like Elvis 62, Elvis 64. And that's the call sign of the different National Guard aircraft coming in and out. <sighs> yes, they do land at Andrews Air Force Base. You can go to a website, uh, ADSB Exchange, ADSB Alpha Delta Sam Bravo, and you can track all aircraft. These are military planes, yeah. <sighs> Military aircraft do show up on ADSB. You have to click the little, on the website I use, ADSB Exchange, you click the little U button and you can get all the military aircraft, but not, not fighters, just mostly uh, transports. You can get it Marine, Air Force One though. And Air Force One pops up on ADSB Exchange. And sometimes you get bombers, B-52s. Do you know what the call sign of the B-52s are? The B-52s go by call sign DOOM, D-O-O-M, so like DOOM 92. Marine One doesn't have ADSB built in yet. That guy was tall. So we're going to walk all the way around this fence, but honestly, this is going to be a heck of a hike. Marine One is a helicopter, and we're actually replacing Marine One. So. The, uh, the Marine one that served us for the most last 50 years is going, is going out of service. Oh, thanks for the subscribe. I'm on HAPS too, but I'm not broadcasting today, but because I just forgot my uh, gimbal, which I need to bring. Yeah, they're going to go out with the uh, VH-92A, I think is with a new version. I actually snapped a photo of it the other day on my uh, Instagram, Penguin6. You can see the new Marine one aircraft was flying by me. That is the new helicopter. And it's already cleared for staff use. And I think they've got to do some testing and then they'll clear it for the president. You know, I saw these like rumors black out at the White House. And the, the, the thing is, they actually do turn the lights out at the White House and the Washington Monument and the Lincoln Memorial late at night. And I think somebody just took a picture at like three in the morning and then posted it like the white house is dark and it, it's you know that's a, the only thing i saw it on was like a lot of like conservative twitter feeds but uh yeah stabilizer is coming soon but uh i mean i've seen the white house without the lights on many times i've seen the washington Monument. i've actually seen them turn the lights off the reason is um are there snipers? Yeah, there's snipers all over the place, but not really on the monument. Um, the reason is because at night it attracts bugs and the bugs like damage the building. They're actually repairing the Jefferson Memorial right now because of bug damage <laughs> from the lights. Whew, that's so cold. Yeah. The bugs are attracted and then they poop, the bugs poo on the, on the memorials and then that stuff creates this like algae-like goo. That's a lot of canines. Never been to DC, the Capitol's right over there. It's a police working dog here. This is a National Guard center over there. Those are all National Guard troops. Yeah, they just had to wash the top of the Jefferson Memorial. It's actually the Jefferson Memorial is under a major renovation. So it's like, I don't know what, limestone, sandstone or something like that. And then they covered it with this special sealant that apparently the bugs really liked. So the bugs would go to the sealant, they'd chew it up, they'd poo it out, and then it formed this like black goo. So the Jefferson Memorial was covered in black poop for like the last couple of years. And they started cleaning it out. As a result now, they, they turn the lights out at most of the memorials, the White House and stuff, on a regular basis. Hmm. So the Capitol's over there. We've got to walk 
quite a long way around. <sighs> We're going to go down to Union Station. I don't think they're sleeping in the garage. That was a major screw-up. People got real... I think some people got in trouble for that. But there are guardsmen right there. See? Yeah, that got fixed in about four hours. There is an off-site... Yes, they do get checked. They actually have an entire building off-site. And all mail and packages goes to this off-site facility, is screened, and then it's taken on, like, armored transport to the capital, and then it's distributed. So that, that was the result of the anthrax attacks about 15, 20 years ago. The capital's over there. Do they always have this much traction? No, no, this is ridiculous. The tour buses, these are filled with National Guard troops. So that is entirely, you can't see them, but those are all guardsmen inside. So the tour buses are being used to shuttle troops from the National Guard Armory and from their hotels uh, to downtown. So like this bus here is going to be full of troops. This is Fox News' headquarters, or NBC News and Fox are in this building. <sighs> it's cold as hell. So, these buses are filled with troops. And dark windows. The Capitol is right over there. Now, we've got a walk. we got a long walk. What is this vehicle? Oh, this is one of the Capitol Police, like... Or is this a TV crew? I don't think they have any signs like that. More guardsmen coming in. They must do a shift change. So these buses hold 40, so there's, so this is like 100, what we see in two others. This is probably about 200 new troops coming in. Uh, maybe. So about 200 soldiers coming in from their hotels or bases. Oh, there's even more over there. This is a massive troop change. Hey, protester. We got some National Guard vehicles down here. So they deployed the 28th Infantry Division out of Pennsylvania and the 29th Infantry Division out of Virginia. Those are National Guard Infantry Divisions. And uh, they come in. Uh, if the troops, I think, have been federalized, so the federal government will pay for that. More troops coming in. There's one guy with a flag over there. This guy's got his gun. Or girl. So what is this? Army National Guard, DC. Oh, this is a DC National Guard vehicle. Whew. These guys are fully armed. Whew. Cold. More troops coming in these vans. So yeah, you can see those guys all carrying their weapons. The weapons are unloaded. Uh, the weapons are unloaded, but they all carry their weapon. They carry a magazine in their vest. You can see it in their uh, pack. I think, I think I can go down this sidewalk. Let's follow the crazy man, yeah? Inside there are more National Guard troops. They're like, they're like, hey, where the hell's lunch? See them? Yeah. They're like, I saw the bus. I want to go home. I just read in the paper something like 150 guardsmen have caught COVID. Um, I don't think they're in session today. It's Monday, right? They're rarely ever in session on a Monday. <sighs> So there's a protester up there with a flag, two flags. He's really patriotic. More of this. Oh, so that's the, there were 25,000 troops. They've started to send some home, but they plan to keep about 5,000 troops until March. Yeah, and March is when the last troops are gonna go away. So there's the capital down there. That's one, two, three blocks. That's three blocks from me, yeah? And then there's another National Guard checkpoint over here. More troops over here. Um, I think they got federalized. 
So when the troops arrived, they became under the authority of the Defense Department rather than under the authority of their governors. So when the troops are staying in their own state, or if they're helping out like a neighboring state, they're under their governor's control. But when the federal government calls them up, then they're put under federal control. So it's a, it's, it's a legal status. You're, you're what's called federalized. So I think these guys have been federalized. So once they're federalized, and the big thing about being federalized is it changes who pays for the, the guard. Once you're federalized, then you get paid, then you get paid out of the Pentagon's budget. Your husband's in the guard. Oh, okay. Well, I used to work as a national security advisor on Capitol Hill, and we used to go over the National Guard budget. <laughs> That's that was what we used then. So, but maybe they were deployed. Some some governors volunteered their troops, but I think once they got here, because I know they also got deputized. We are in a maze. They got deputized once they got here by the Capitol Police. So I don't know if they got formally. What the hell is this guy doing? Hang on a second. I'm gonna get killed. This is nothing. This fencing. Oh, serious. Look at all those guys coming. Hey, where's your husband from? Maybe he's in one of these cars. Is he still here? That would be hilarious if we could find him. <laughs> yeah, these guys aren't under a, a disparate command structure. If your husband's actually deployed, we could come over here. No, no, a lot of them are, are military police, a lot are transportation units, but the overall command units, the two one that was a week, the ones down here are the 29th, and the ones up at the White House were the 28th. I think I got that right. And then, of course, though, I've run into all sorts of different units. I ran into uh, an intelligence unit from Florida. I ran into lots of transportation units. Uh, there's a medical unit. There's actually oh, there's some vehicles over here. Yeah, they, I hope you're going to test him before he gets home. You know, the numbers they're getting are really scary. About a, a hundred Capitol Police now have tested positive. Somewhere between 50 and 100 Capitol Police have now tested positive. And over 150 Guardsmen have tested positive for COVID. Oh, it's cold. That'd be tricky. Yeah, he's cold. So this is like a depot. There's some medical units, there's some generator units. Man, that's a big, that's one of those big high met transports or whatever those are. Yeah, they're never gonna be able to keep up with all those. I mean, I hope, I hope they give them tests when they get home. It's like these guys are MPs. I did see, it was interesting, I saw some MP units, but they were actually driving Ford F-150s. Hey, Gwen. Yeah, the Capitol Police have got some cases. Look at all the vehicles in here, guys. This is like, it's like a parking garage. Oof, I'm like trying to balance on this fence. So that building there is U.S. Capitol Police headquarters. And then, that's like a, it's like electronic warfare. Yeah. Oh, honestly, it was hilarious. I was talking to these soldiers and I was like, well, what's your unit? And they're like, sir, they haven't even told us what unit we're in now. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, they just grabbed everybody, anybody that was available. And they just said it. And so he's like, Sergeant, what unit are we? The sergeant's like, I think we're this. And I'm like, OK, 5000 troops are going to stay until March, but about 20,000 are going to be going home soon. Yeah. Oh, it's cold. Oh. Mm. So now I think I can turn. How's it going? How long's your shift? How long do they eight keep hours. eight hours? No, yeah. oh, just. It was was 12. Yeah, stay dry. It's going to snow in a bit. I noticed. <laughs> yeah, it's going to suck. Where, where are you from, man? Maryland. Oh, okay. Not a, not a far trip. Hey, take care. You too. 
Oh. So these are MPs, actually. They're you know, these are Maryland MP units. That's a big truck. DC. It's interesting if you actually look at the units that the National Guard and the active duty military that are stationed within, say, 50, 100 miles of DC. There are a lot of MP units. There's all the homeless. So that's where all the homeless got pushed off to. They usually sleep at Union Station. So I'm like, I'm gonna go on the other side of the street in a second. So I have to confess that I do look a bit sketchy. I'm wearing my old army jacket. I'm wearing basically um, parachute c cargo pants. Got a baseball hat. I haven't shaved. Got a mask, of course. Baseball. So I mean, I look like I look I look sketchy, and I'm carrying a phone and I'm talking and I'm walking a perimeter. Yeah, a lot of these guys are definitely saying, "Okay, who's this?" Who's this old geezer? What's this one? So, anyways, I'm mentioning within about 250 miles of DC, there's a significant number of military police units. Not just National Guard, but active duty military. I always thought that's a just in case kind of thing. Ooh. Yeah. Got a long, skinny duffel bag. My, my right hand has gotten very cold. Even though I'm wearing gloves, holding the phone in one position is kind of uh, blood curling. These guys now, see, here we're at, this is where the Senator's offices are, this building right here. This is the Hart Senate Office Building. And unlike what we saw way down on the mall, where there was no people, up here, what you're seeing are troops fully armed, fully deployed. I'm sure they know I'm here. They're like sketch guy approaching, sketch guy next sector. Uh, so I wonder where this house is. I do use ADSB quite a bit. Uh, I use Open ADSB as my main. App, and then I use ADSB Exchange for tracking uh, on the website. I'm just going to walk the perimeter, and then I'm going to get lunch. So this house, I believe this is the daughters of the I know, who? I can't remember what house this is—the Susan B. Anthony house or the Betsy Ross house or something like that. But it said the residents of this house. Were one of the few residents to actually fight the British when they came to attack Washington, D.C. And then uh, the British commander was like, eh, at least you had the guts to fight us. The Belmont House, I guess. So he spared that house from being burned. I think if I had a MAGA hat and had like an American flag on my back like that dude back there did, I'd be like, sus. I was thinking, nah, I'm thinking I'm gonna get a sandwich. Whew. Okay, so this is the Supreme Court. This building right here is the US Supreme Court. For those who've been watching my entire broadcast, we're about 50% of the way done walking the perimeter. But I don't know what it's gonna be like on the house side. Look at my gloves. Look at these gloves I bought at 7 Eleven. They're already falling apart. Cheap gloves. That's what you get when you buy 99 cent gloves. <laughs> oh, are we there yet? Yeah, we've been seeing... Well, you know, it's interesting. Oh, well, there's some guardsmen right here. We haven't seen many National Guard at the Supreme Court. I mean, there's some right there. We saw a lot of guard back at the Hart Senate Office Building. And I suspect we'll see some over on the House Buildings, which we're going to be in about five or ten minutes. This is Supreme Court. 
So my classmate from law school is actually a Supreme Court justice now, but I don't know which office is hers. Well, one, one day I'll go pop in on her. <laughs> ah, so we're coming back on East Capitol Street. This should give us a really good view of the Capitol in just a minute. There'll probably be a lot of troops. Now, this is, what is this? First, this is First Street. The other day we couldn't get past 6th Street, so there were five more blocks were closed off. State units on Title 32 like full-time National Guard benefits of Fed play. Cool, thank you for that. I imagine the states are hurting for money right now. It does give you a weird vibe. And this though, the White House and the Capitol are the only two places I've seen the razor wire. How's it going, man? Too cold. Me. You got snow coming, you know. <laughs> Two hours, you're going to see the snow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have a good one, man. They're bored. Whew. It's going to snow, yeah. Two or four or something like that. Four o'clock, they're saying, hey, Trish, how's it going? Yeah, so I think up north of DC, we're gonna get more snow than down here. Yeah, it's gonna get icky. I think it's because there's nobody here. I think the reason I've got a good signal is that there's just literally nobody around. Hey, Flames, how's it going? So welcome to the barbed wire fence of the US Capitol. This is the Shakespeare Library, which was also under National Guard protection the other day. It was just like, oh, you got to be kidding me. God forbid the protesters will burn Shakespeare. Yeah, it's funny. There's one National Guardsman who's actually keeping his day job. His day job is like a teacher. So he's been teaching his kids via Zoom out of the back of the Humvee. And then when he's done teaching, he goes out and like uh, walks a patrol. <laughs> yeah, he's, it's even funnier than that. He's actually a music teacher. So there's this guy in the back of a Humvee playing a flute and a clarinet and an oboe and stuff via Zoom to his, uh, his students. And then he does it. Definitely citizen soldiers. I was telling the kids, they're like, kids, it's going to snow tonight. They're like, that just means we'll be online tomorrow instead of in person. He, I said, what? He says, there's no such thing as a snow day anymore. He's like, distance learning has killed the snow day. I'm like, oh, well, that sucks for you. <laughs> I wonder how much razor wire it costs by the foot. Yeah. I mean, what does like a foot of razor wire cost and how many miles have we gone past that's what I've been saying Amanda it's like if I could go back a year I would have bought Bitcoin I would have put money in zoom and I would have put money in fencing I would be so loaded right now because as crazy as this fence is you have to understand this fence actually used to go three miles down to the White House and back. And it was just insane. It was, it still is insane. So these are Ram cars. Now on a normal day when there's no fence, they still have these police cars over here and their mission is to ram any suicide bomber who tries to get past. So they're called the Ram cars. Bitcoin is pretty crazy. If you can deal with the wild swings. Oh, so I'm gonna take you to where they found the bomb, yeah? So they, so they found a pipe bomb on January 6th in front of the uh, Republican National Headquarters. And that's just down around the corner here. I actually mace, I actually have mace in my pocket. 
I kind of feel bad I have to carry it. I mean, I used to, when I lived in Hong Kong, I mean, there's just, you know, there's no crime there. But now that I'm here, and I've got these, you know, crazy slash drugged out, aggressive homeless people sometimes, and then a few wild animals. There's coyotes up where I live in DC. So I put some pepper spray in my pocket. Uh, this is the Library of Congress building. Now this one actually is the most popular Library of Congress because they have the best cafeteria up on the roof. And we used to go over there and eat at the Library of Congress cafeteria because it was pretty good. It was like a food court before food courts were a thing. The creme de la creme of cafeterias is the World Bank. If you know somebody who works at the World Bank, they can get you into the World Bank cafeteria. And there they have chefs from all over the world making really good food. The Library of Congress is generally open to the public, somewhat tourable, but not now during COVID. The actual books and stuff, you need to have a um, researcher card to like get in. So, I mean, you can go in to like look at the main reading room from an observation deck. But to go into the main reading room and actually do research and stuff, uh, you need a researcher card. Now, I used to be congressional staff, and so I used to be able to walk around a lot inside there. The World Bank is down by the White House. IMF World Bank are next to each other, next to the White House. I mean, literally one block from the White House. The, yeah, the, this is the modern building. The older one is the really historic with the beautiful... I don't know how many floor open reading room and stuff, but uh, this one is just kind of bureaucratic. This one I think houses most of the Congressional Research Service. The CRS is the library, is the Congress's like think tank. So like, I'll give you an example. We were doing research on housing prices, all right? And of course, you know, housing prices have continued to go up. And then what we were saying, yes, housing prices have gone up for an average home in America, but has the definition of an average home in America also changed? So CRS tasked a couple housing specialists to investigate what was an average house in the 1950s versus an average house in 2000 or whatever, and you know how much difference in size and whether that had any impact on the figures that we were getting for average house prices. It did, but it didn't account for all of it, of course. Supreme Court is about two blocks away. Oh, trust me, Jason, we've done much more worthless waste of money than that. <laughs> so I'll tell you one. I, I tell this, I've told this story before, so some of you have heard it before, but one time I had to fly out to Johnston Atoll, okay? Johnston Atoll is, this is, a, this is the Cannon House office building. This is where the congressmen have their offices, by the way. There's going to be heavy security here. This is where they found the bomb the other day. So the uh, pipe bomb was placed right here. Anyway, so I fly out to Johnston Atoll, yeah? It's this three, it's, this, it's basically a runway in the middle of nowhere Pacific, all right? Um, we land on this runway in a military aircraft and we're greeted by an Air Force guy. Now, I knew this was basically an army base because the army was destroying chemical weapons there. But I was really, really surprised. I'm like, why am I being greeted by an Air Force colonel instead of an army colonel? Very, very strange. And then he says to me, he says, well, I'm here because of Safeguard C. I said, Safeguard C, what the hell is that? Safeguard C of the 1960 above ground nuclear testing treaty between the US and the Russia. And I said, you're here because of a 30 year old treaty. He said, yes, under the treaty, the United States maintains one above ground nuclear testing base in a state of perpetual readiness. Should we ever need for military reasons to restart above ground nuclear testing? And I'm looking at him like, what? <laughs> He's like, yeah, we're safeguard C. We are ready at the president's call or the military's need to start commencing above ground nuclear testing again. I'm like, what? How much does this cost? He's like, about half a million dollars a year. What? <laughs> so, needless to say, we got rid of it. Oh, where does Rhodes go? Okay. So that's the Republican headquarters, Library of Congress, Cannon Building, 
Longworth Building, and then the Rayburn Building. These are the three buildings where the congressmen have their offices. These roads go down to Nationals Park. The baseball stadium is down that way. The U.S. Capitol is back up to my right. You'll see it again in about a minute or two. So anyway, we were able to do away with Safeguard C because it just seems silly to continue to have an above-ground nuclear testing facility in a state of perpetual readiness. Oh, your mileage may vary. <sighs> I'm actually on top of a tunnel right now. So this is the Amtrak tunnel right over here. So trains that go from New York to, say, Miami, they have to go through this tunnel under the U.S. Capitol. Oh, so we've got a checkpoint here. Uh, the Navy Yard is down that way about six, eight blocks, and then a bit to the left, but kind of near the Navy Yard. Here you can see the Capitol building. Down that way is towards the uh, Navy Yard and the wharf, as we call it, sort of. There's your Capitol. And we're going to continue walking. So the Rayburn Building is where the senior members of Congress are. Yeah, the Eighth and I is back, well, eight blocks that way and a couple blocks south. Longworth is known as Long Roach. <laughs> it's like the ickiest building. And then the Cannon Building is also not, it's one of the more... Cannon is bigger, but it's a bit old. And uh, Rayburn is big and new. And Long Roach is small. Kamala Harris currently lives at Blair House, which is the official guest residence of the United States. It's across the street from the White House. She'll be moving to the Vice President's house, which is up where I live in Northwest DC, but she won't be moving for a couple weeks because they're rebuilding a chimney. Chemical weapons base, cool. Which one? Aniston? Tuella? Aberdeen? I'm trying to remember all the chemical waste and bases we had. Redstone, okay, I remember that. So you had a chemical agent disposal facility. That was one of the same things we had at Johnston Atoll where I was out. So Johnston Atoll was actually the test, test facility before they built the Aniston chemical agent disposal facility, which probably cost like a billion dollars. At the moment, she's staying, she's staying in Blair House, which is the guest house of the United States. So if like, a foreign, like Vladimir Putin was to visit, he could stay at the guest house. A bad place. It's, yeah, it's kind of an old facility. There's the Capitol building. I'm going to take a picture. More troops over here. Uh, I can't go that way. No, I can't go that way. i got to go around. Ugh. Annoying as hell. You know, it's funny, but the, one of the most exclusive neighborhoods in Washington, D.C. is an area called Spring Valley. And about 20 years ago, a guy said, you know what, I'm going to tear down my $2.2 .2 million house and build a $5 million house. So he started digging, and guess what he found? Mustard gas! Yeah! It was a World War I chemical weapons training facility that had been buried over for 50 years. Nobody forgot it. Everybody forgot about it. And when he went to build his house, he basically mustard gassed his employees. So then they started doing all this research and it turned out that like an entire neighborhood of multi, multi-million dollar homes was built on top of a mustard gas dump. And it was like, oh God, not good, not good. <laughs> They're still dealing with that. Yeah, so I went actually, it was fun. I actually was like house hunting up there, you know? And they had these beautiful glossy brochures, you know. It's like, this is a four-bedroom, three-bath, you know, 2,500-square-foot place, da-da-da. And I'm going through the brochures, and then suddenly I come across this, like, giant, thick raft of papers. And it's all, like, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And I'm like, oh, it's one of those houses. So, oh, actually, here's some, uh, let's stay on the side street, I guess. There's a bunch of guard guys getting in the bus. Remember I told you these buses are basically shuttle buses for the guard. I'm warmer now, a little bit. So 10 day orders. So, they, so is your husband coming home in 10 days? When does she get to come back? 
or is it just sort of perpetual? Yeah, people still live in those houses. Maybe I should drive over to the armory and see what we see over there. The armory is over by RFK Stadium where the Redskins used to play. And it's over about 15 blocks from here. Um, they, so like five of the houses were so seriously mustard gassed that they had to like, basically, they basically like ET covered those houses in like plastic and then they dug up everything with like hand shovels basically and got rid of all the mustard gas they could find. And then now, what they're, now they're just still reviewing like old maps and they, they interviewed like construction guys from like the 20s and the 30s and what they saw. Like they're like, oh yeah, I saw this shed, but we just buried it or something like that, you know? Stayed, oh, okay. Oof. You didn't miss much. Just a chance to sleep in a parking garage and catch COVID, I mean. <laughs> When I was young, I met this guy and he had it, he had the whole system worked out perfectly. Yeah, there's a, the train tunnels over there. The tunnel of the Capitol, there's actually a train here, a small one that goes there. So this guy I knew, he joined the National Guard when he was 17. Then he did ROTC in college. But the way he structured it was that his guard service counted towards his active duty requirement. So by the time he graduated, he'd already had like five years of his sixth active duty requirement for ROTC. And then of course the Cold War ended and they're just like, you know what? We'll give you $20,000 not to commission. He's like, okay. <laughs> so I like, he got his college paid for. He got a 20 grand like signing, unsigning bonus. And I was like, oh, that's a pretty sweet deal. Yeah, yeah. Many universities have ROTC programs that pay a partial or a full scholarship depending on your commitment level. So it's an actual, it's an option towards paying your way. You know, everybody keeps saying the power went out, but I, honestly, I didn't see it. Um, I think a lot of people got confused by the fact that at nighttime, they actually do turn the lights out at the memorials and the monuments. Uh, in part to save electricity, in part to uh, stop bugs and stuff from eating the building. You know what I just realized? Holy crap, I'm behind the fence line. How the hell do I get out of here? <laughs> Seriously, somehow I've magically found myself behind the fence line. I need to get to the other side of this fence, but I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah, the whole, the whole area is surrounded by giant fences with barbed wire, and I'm kind of behind one of them. I'm gonna ask this dude if I can get through this gate. Oh, he's not gonna be there. <laughs> Oops. So this is the capital area, and then this is the Health and Human Services, HHS. But this fence line kind of encompasses HHS too. I don't know if I can get out through there. This is whacked. I'm trapped. I am in a maze. I am literally in a maze of fences. There's an open something there. I guess I can go down here. Shit, no, that gate just closed. That just had a big F off. How did I get here? This sucks. All right, let's see where these dude goes. I'm gonna follow that guy who's walking on the street, trying to get back to the mall. He's lost too. 
He's like, uh, how do we get through here? I think I have to go down the next block. All these buildings are blocked off. Oh my god. I gotta go all the way down to the train tracks and then come all the way back. Okay, in the in the list of things that sucks, this is pretty high up on there because these Nimrods have closed this street for no reason whatsoever. I'm following him. That's just an ambulance. This is a this is actually because of the closure. This is a major east-west road with a tunnel there. You might I, I'd be sketched. This is annoying. I got to go all the way around this building. <sighs> so this is another house building. This is actually where the house keeps all their computer systems. The like websites and email servers are in this building. This building is like mega secure. Even on a good day, it's mega secure. So they're not letting that guy through there either. Oh crap, we gotta go all the way around. <sighs> F me. Yeah, we're getting a long hike. The other day we cut through HHS, but today there is no option. That guy's trying to cut through. He's gonna get a no thank you. No, he was never in D.C., was he? He was in Hawaii, I thought. This is one of those buildings they built thinking that, you know, let's just build a cheap, boring building for like 20 years, and then it'll go out of business, and we'll just tear it down. And then, of course, we're like, oh, well, you know, if we just paint the windows, we could stay another 10 years, okay? There are a lot of buildings in Washington like that. It is. Typical government ugly building. FDR was smart about that. During World War II, the need for buildings was huge. So FDR ordered these really crappy buildings to be built right on the mall by the monuments. Oh, there's a big train coming. The idea was buildings on the mall, people wouldn't stand for that. And after the war, they would demand those buildings be taken down. And of course, those agencies done away with. Kind of worked. The CSX system. This is a freight train going up the east coast of the U.S. We often see a lot of coal trains go by here too. Man, I gotta go over here. This, this is NASA's headquarters. I gotta go all the way over to NASA's headquarters just to get out of here. Oh, Tillix, Tillix, Tillix. Ah, 100% ID check. All right, we just keep walking. Right, this is this is annoying, guys. This is definitely on the annoying scale that I have to do this gigantic four-block loop. Then I have to go back. I'm gonna go over a block and then walk back four blocks. Yeah. All right, they're all the same. Show an ID. Show an ID. I mean, I know where I am. I used, to work, I used to work in these buildings, but it's just security theater at this point. <laughs> la, 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 la. So that's NASA's headquarters right over there. I like Hong Kong better too. I'm looking at friends, my friends in Hong Kong, they're like, it's like 75 degrees, they're out in shorts, running through the jungle. Here I am wearing like three layers of long underwear, miserable and cold. Yeah, I see something new. Something that's really pretty boring. <laughs> oh, you guys wanna see a fire truck? There's a cool fire truck down here. <laughs> The president's foam trucks are down here. The president's helicopter fire trucks are based down here. 
I miss Hong Kong as well, quite a bit. Okay, here we go. Now we get to turn, and I think we get to go back. I hope this road's open. Yeah, this looks open. Oh, there's an engine in the middle. The president doesn't have fire trucks. DC has fire trucks that are specifically tasked for White House protection, basically. So whenever the president's helicopter takes off, they dispatch what's called a foam unit task force, which is two airport style foam trucks that are at the landing zone at the White House for Marine One. And then there's another engine, engine 16, which is known as first due at the White House. And that's the fire truck that's first response mission is the White House. And those guys, they actually have a presidential seal on their fire truck. And I've been told, but I can't verify, that the firemen who serve in that engine company have to go through like background checks. So the train tracks are right up there. You can still see that train going by. It's a long one. I was told by some friends who worked at the White House once there was a fire in the old executive office building and they were just shocked at the response. Like they said just like half the city's fire trucks showed up and they all had like a specific mission. Like the president wasn't even in town yet one of the ladder trucks put a ladder up to his apartment automatically because that was just what they were supposed to do get a ladder to the president's private apartment and of course the fire wasn't even in that building it was in the building next door but the official drill called for put a ladder to the president's thing it's pretty crazy the president's background checked is considered an election so the presidents do not undergo a formal background check because they consider, and I'm, this is it, they consider the election to be a nationwide referendum on their background. The same is basically true for congressmen. They don't have to go through a formal background check. They've been elected to that office, though there is data that is withheld from members, certain members of Congress. Yeah, basically. So, there's what's known, so like if you serve on the Armed Services Committee or the Intelligence Committee or the Foreign Affairs Committee, you do have like, you have to have like a staffer who goes through a background check and that staffer is responsible for all like uh, secure data that comes over to your office and stuff. No, you have to be an American, natural born American citizen to be president of the United States. Okay, look at this truck, guys. Tell me this truck looks like something super sketch. Black. That is a weird looking truck. Satellite GPS. Hmm. There's a bunch of fire trucks coming. Uh, just an engine. Oh God, what a hike. Now there's one group of congressmen that are super, super vetted. They're known as the Gang of Eight. The Gang of Eight are like the, the Speaker, the President of the Senate, the majority and minority leaders of the Intelligence Committees, and like one or two others. Now they're the ones that are formally notified of covert operations. So like, if there's gonna be a covert operations, the gang of eight are brought in and notified. They don't have to give approval, nor, nor can they give disapproval, but they are notified. So, the thing is, I am certain the intelligence agencies and the FBI do an investigation of certain members of Congress and they have the information, they just don't do anything with it. No, I'm going to be pretty low on the priority list for the vaccine, I think. I think I'm actually probably going to get the vaccine in Hong Kong. Because I'll be in Hong Kong this summer, and I'll probably, and Hong Kong has like two doses for every person. So they bought double the vaccine needed 
So every person can get like two shots if they want. Two, I mean, two different vaccines. And I'll probably be able to get it faster over there. <laughs> I'm just going to visit this summer. We'll see what happens after that. <sighs> hey, guess what, guys? I'm back. I've done my full loop. We are back where we started. Hong Kong has the Pfizer version and a Chinese version. They have one of each. So you can vote. You can be patriotic or you can get the effective one. All right, guys, I tell you what, we're going to sign off. That was a hike and a half. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you guys again soon. This will be up on my YouTube later today. So I'll see you there. Bye bye.